What is going on everyone? It's your guy Cole Jackson back here on Road Graders and today we are going to be talking about the true nature of the channel and that is this road grading offensive line, this rushing attack from Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. If you guys are looking forward to this, if you're enjoying Victory Monday, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're new here, drop a comment down below, let me know what you guys think about the run game. Before we jump into this, we want to thank BetUS for sponsoring this video. As you can see, we got the Monday Night Football lines up here. You're going to get the best lines in the business with the fastest payouts. If if I'm you guys, I'm hitting that Jacksonville cover, and I'm also hitting the Washington Commanders cover. I'm going to take both the dogs in this game to cover those spreads. I think it's easy money. Be sure to go check out BetUS. Use code YouTube 150 to get a 150% sign up bonus on your first deposit and start playing today. And so let's jump into this because I want to get into this is the Derrick Henry experience. You know, this is when he was on the Titans, this is kind of how it would go. He would wear down defenses and start to get those chunk yards. And so you you saw it in this game. So going up to 207 left in the second quarter. Henry was at nine carries, 24 yards, and then that one yard touchdown that he scored. So, I mean, not an impressive line, a line that seemed more like what we were seeing the last two games. From there on, 16 carries, 127 yards, that's a 7.9 yard per carry and another touchdown. Now, the, the funny thing about this, if I isolate this and take out the five or six runs at the end of the fourth quarter when they're grinding out heavy boxes, that yard per carry is like 12 plus yards. So he just absolutely destroyed in the third quarter. We're going to take a look at what changed. So I kind of want to start. So these plays, uh, so in those first nine carries that went for 27, I pulled three because I want to show you this is kind of what it looked like early in the game. And so we're going to go out here with the toss, trying to get the ball outside and we get negative yardage on this one. So this was kind of how it felt the last you know couple games. And this is just you know they rush to the line the ravens rush to the line and they get the toss out and you see the cowboys shift so as they shift micah parsons comes to this side and this is supposed to be a pin and pull just like let me pull up my screen brush because it's not up um so this is supposed to be a pin and pull but the problem is nobody pins and you're gonna see right here in the third in the second level so watch the receivers come in and you end up right here with two receivers blocking one db but nobody pinning in on either micah parsons or the number 50 linebacker so just kind of a miscommunication ricard's going to take care of that but nobody pins 50 um so these are the types of things that were happening you know just causing issues in the run game now we're going to get out we're under center and we're just going to get you know micah parsons blowing up this block um so he's going to keep an eye on patrick mccary versus micah parsons here and parsons is just going to knock him back and, and make a play here and this is kind of you know the run experience we've been talking about where it's you know one block being missed you know messing up the whole play going to go to the left side and Voorhees is going to get blown up by 50 see how he just doesn't you know just doesn't make his block so this was kind of, you know, going through the first two quarters, it's kind of feeling the same old, same old with the run game. And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but that's what we would need to get away. So what I want to focus on is what did the Ravens actually do to get the run game going? And the number one thing that they did was unleash the option run game. So you're going to see here, they're going to bring 80 out. Isaiah likely is going to get out there, make a block. Lamar is going to go for some chunk yardage. So... This is going to be your zone read. So you're going to get zone blocks coming from the offensive line going right. Henry's path would be the outside butt cheek of Falele. And the read man is going to be Micah Parsons. And this is the perfect way to neutralize a guy like Micah. You read him, right? And then you react to what he's going to do. So as the ball snaps, Lamar's eyes right on Parsons. If Parsons comes down, Lamar keeps. If Parsons sits, hand to Henry. Now the beautiful thing is, you got these two combo blocks on the inside that are looking pretty stout right now as the as it goes on. So, you know, th and what I'm trying to show here is where you have your options, right? Because if Micah Parsons is sitting here, Lamar's handing that ball to Henry. Likely he's going to kick him out or at least pull him a little bit. And then Henry's going up, but Micah comes in. So then Lamar's just going to follow Isaiah Likely. So just easy football. And the beauty is with this type of run... Because it's pulling the defense so much, 
Lamar doesn't need to take contact, right? Like that little push there. That's not, those aren't the types of hits where, you know, Lamar is going to wear down. Like like in the KC game where he's scrambling nonstop. We're going to do the exact same thing here. And we're going to read on the backside. So we're going to once again read. I believe the, the read man would be Parsons again as the most outside defensive lineman. The shift comes in late. So he's get he's pretty inside here. But he's going to read that he's got that inside leverage. You got Mark Andrews out here. And he's just going to once again follow Isaiah Likely. Likely looks back inside. Andrews does just enough. Touchdown for Lamar Jackson. So that option run game is just creating so much space. And then you're able to mix in stuff like this. So this is going to be an RPO. They're going to have Zay going in motion here. So there's your pass option. And then you got your run option here. And we can see, and Lamar would also have the option to go. Micah Parsons sits. He's not coming downhill. If he's coming downhill, then Lamar is either throwing that ball or taking off himself. It's got to be a quick action because your 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 uh, your offensive line is moving and making blocks, so you can't just stand there with the ball. So he's going to sit, and he hands it off. And this is what is the beauty of having Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry do this. So you're going to get two pullers here you get Voorhees Tyler Linderbaum Voorhees is going to be the kick out man Tyler Linderbaum's the lead blocker coming inside so there's the kick out you got a nice little wall off block there Linderbaum's going to come inside and spring a nice little run and then Derrick Henry's going to do Derrick Henry things but the beautiful thing is this option freezes Parsons whereas if there was no read here Parsons is just going to run down the line, and it's Micah Parsons. So you see right here, you can see the little hesitation in Parsons' step right there, right? And now he's taking off. So the beauty of that is Parsons does end up making the tackle, but it's nine yards downfield versus if you don't have that option read, he's just jetting down and making that tackle a lot sooner. He's going to have better leverage at the contact point. He's not going to be able to drag him. So that this option run game is just... I know people don't love it because Lamar's running in it, but I just feel like you get plays like this where he's just not taking the contact, right? He's running out of bounds, but he's picking up easy yardage. Once again, we're going to keep it. Isaiah Likely as the motion man. This one goes for 16. It, it's just, it's easy work. <laughs> And you can't, and so we're going to get into the Derrick Henry runs, and I didn't do these in chronological order, but the impact it has is it starts to freeze the D-line, right? So we, we've watched a few of these now in a row where the D-line is going to start to read that, that mesh point because they need to be able to react. So as they're doing that, you're going to get situations where once you're running a more conventional run with just Derrick Henry and it's not a read, well, that D-line and that defense is stuck, you know, making sure that they're making that read or else, um, you know, they risk giving up another big play on an option. So just rewatching a couple of these while I talk over them, but you can see the defense flowing in and Lamar is so good at reading these plays and making the right decision about whether or not to pull. Let's get through this one one more time. 94 cuts inside, easy. It's just, it becomes easy football at this point. Now this is going to be, this is the game clincher. So this was two minutes left, second and nine, I believe it was. Lamar gets the first down. So they're going to, they're going to motion Zay and it's going to be that power right read or inverted veer, whatever you want to call it. So as he comes, you know, there's two options. You're either going to hand it off to Zay who has Justice Hill as the lead blocker or Lamar's going to keep it going inside and big Philele gets out there, makes a block. Um, and you also get uh, Stanley and Ricard here on the left side. Watch this combo block. They're going to work down, cave that in. Philele is going to pull behind it, and this is going to be what clinches that game. You know, I think that was Kolar that ended up getting thrown. But So that option game was one of the biggest difference makers. That led to a lot of Lamar Jackson's production. So let's take a look at what led to a lot of Derrick Henry's production. Because a lot of that is... Better run blocking for sure. I don't want to discount that there was better run blocking. You are playing against a front seven that has struggled against the run this year. No doubt about that. I think that needs to be factored into folks' expectations moving forward. This is a bad run defense, but we also took advantage of that. So, I mean, good and bad there. 
And so this is just going to be guys grinding, right? So the, these these are kind of those five, six yard chunk yards that we want to see. So this is just going to be outside zone right. So aim point is going to be off the tight end. But with Patrick Ricard as a lead blocker, this is getting into those zone concepts. Everybody's taking that scoop step. Love the pass off by Falele here. He doesn't get tripped up. He's going to get into that second level as one of those lead blockers we don't maintain that leverage point too well but we're moving bodies and that's really what it's all about it's about vertically or sorry horizontally displacing defenders patrick ricard turns his guy in kolar gets out there gets dirty ricard with the kick out there uh, so you know guys just doing their jobs getting out in space being athletic that's the most important thing here and then this is just derrick henry being derrick henry and there's gonna be a lot of that like this this is supposed to be, you know, an inside zone play. And he just sees this, right? So he sees guys stacking up three on three here. The the, the hole's supposed to be back inside here, but he's just going to kick this outside because he sees him against a DB and he's just going to run around Trayvon Diggs, get that first down. Um, so, you know, some of this was just Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry and he's so damn good. We're going back outside zone. And look at where we're cutting behind. So this is one of the things I wanted to highlight because I know a lot of people are saying we ran left, it made a difference, but the guys, Patrick McCarry, Daniel Falele, did some good work on the backside. You see Falele passing off. So he's, and I complained about this a lot last week where we got to pass off that block, but focus on getting into the second level. McCarry's got to overtake. And you're going to see it right here. That big paw comes up just enough to pass off while we're still moving horizontally because again, the run's going this way. Falele's got to seal this inside shoulder of the linebacker. He gets out there, gets his mitts on him, and that allows Henry to exploit the cutback. Nice little wall-off block here by Mark Andrews, too. And this is just a good read because it looks like Ronnie Stanley gets stacked up on the left side, and that's what Henry's going to read off of, right? His, his target point is going to be outside here at kind of the ghost tight end because it's running to the weak side, and he's just going to cut this back. But this is why backside blockers and zone are so important. That's what Derrick Henry does so well. And he's just going to cut that back. I'm going to keep going here. It's going to be inside zone. And this was that block that I tweeted about. So, again, backside. Again, this is targeting the left, right? So this is inside zone. So we're targeting it off Voorhees' butt. We kind of want to run right in here, right where Ricard goes. That's your gap where it's designed, but because it's zone, we create those cutback opportunities. And this is where backside blockers are so important. And Falele just continues to grind. He's going to grind down on that ace block with Tyler Linderbaum. And McCary's going to get out there. And this is just such a savvy vet move. The run's supposed to be going this way, right? McCary just needs to wall off his defender, and he literally turns horizontally. Henry, with his vision and his ability to cut, is going to go right between that ace block from Falele and Linderbaum and that wall off from Patrick McCary. And then make someone miss and get into that end zone. So again, this was a, another block that was designed to go to the left for sure, but it's that right side creating that cutback opportunity. Falele, McCary grinding on the backside. You know, I got to give them a ton of credit because... You know, th these aren't easy runs, right? And the, and working in the backside can be difficult because you don't know if there's going to be a cutback. You got to just continue to grind, create leverage, go from there. This is going to be one of those Derrick Henry being Derrick Henry's. This is an, I'm, I've been calling this ISO lead. It's kind of a, looks more like inside zone, but the could also be looked at as a counter because the run action's going to the left here, but the handoff is on the right side of the quarterback. So even though it's not a hard cut counter, it does turn into a counter and this is just going to be a beautiful read left side of the or right side of the line gets stacked up you got an ace block here on i think I believe that's mazzy smith between Voorhees and linderbaum they're just going to grind Voorhees is going to continue to kind of create that leverage and wall off stanley's going to kick out and then also a nice block on the inside here from patrick mccary who's got to overtake 97 and he's just going to work that leverage point so incredibly hard. There, turn him back in, wall him off, just like he did on the last play. And Derrick Henry with his ball carrier vision, it's just super high level. This is going to be that stiff arm that was hurt around the world. Bam, night. Let's watch that again. And nope. <laughs> 
love that. Keep her moving here. Last play I think we're going to look at. And again, Derrick Henry, just he's so damn hard to tackle. So that is what we have for you guys. I think that this was just such an impressive game, mostly because, you know, we saw improvements in a variety of ways. We saw better offensive play calling going to those option concepts. We saw really good protect. I, I call it smart runs from Lamar Jackson's to avoid contact, get out of bounds, um, you know, on those option concepts and not take the contact because those that those are the runs that will wear him down. Those are the hits we don't need him taking, but he's exploiting that zone option. He's, you know, getting the defense flowing and then he's just getting out of bounds, not taking that contact. I think that's what we want to see. We saw Derrick Henry doing what he does so well. We saw better run blocking. It, it was just kind of everybody was firing on all cylinders from the coaching staff to you know the decision making to the offensive line to the running back it's just exactly what you want to see if you're looking forward to more of this run game going forward hit that like button for me hit subscribe if you're new here be sure to drop a comment down below and thank you to bet us for sponsoring this video